Pula's business is developing and distributing agriculture insurance solution to smallholder farmers. We sell insurance to those people who have never bought insurance before. It helps farmers to be self-sufficient. It means that if things go wrong, you don't have to beg. They're able to get a claim and as such bounce back. My name is Rose Goslinger and I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Pula. My name is Thomas Njeru, I'm the co-CEO and co-founder of Pula. To us as a startup, sustainability means offering our product to farmers in a way that they'll want to buy it again. Providing benefits to all our partners and farmers. I was born and brought up in a village in Embu, which is on the slopes of Mount Kenya. I always believed that you could explain the world in numbers. More so, I was also very interested in understanding what actually helps improve the livelihoods of people. I come from a family of missionaries. Growing up in a family like that, you're effectively trained to you know, contribute to society. When I told my parents that I was going to study economics, they thought economics, you know, how is that going to contribute to society? There's so much risk in agriculture. Pula's mission is to enable smallholder farmers to de-risk their farm. We rely on technology and data to deploy our products. Machine learning, satellite data, combining it to really understand how climates behave. We use a combination of mobile technology as well as satellite remote sensing technologies. Farmers need simple products that are easy to understand and that cover for everything. Our flagship product does exactly that. It covers everything from droughts to floods to hurricanes to locusts. And it's simple to explain. This is the way it works. On average, farmers will get three metric tons, and we pay out if they get less than two metric tons. So they only have to remember two numbers. Normal is three. Once it gets below two, I get paid. That's it. It uses a combination of technology, data, and boots on the ground. We employ hundreds of young rural people to actually go and harvest on people's farms. That actually engage on a regular basis with farmers and build the trust. You can see in this farm, some patches look like they don't have crops. So this could be maybe an incidence whereby there were accessories. Uh, one big challenge, especially with these counties, also the Elston, they know they are going to benefit in, from the insurance cover at the end of the season. We want to be able to serve as many farmers as possible at a fantastic service level. But that effectively means that our business becomes profitable. And to young startups, profitability and, and being able to hold your own is everything. Mm. So his side is, has been affected by floods. Yeah. Insurance is one of those things that you need, but you don't want. When I started working on insurance, people said, in Africa, there's no insurance culture. And I believe that as a business, we are changing that. We have to spend a lot of time and energy and resources to get the farmers to trust, but also appreciate the need to have insurance. If you'd have asked me a couple of years ago, you know, what our, you know, what my grand vision would have been, it would have been to insure, you know, 25,000 farmers. At this point, we've insured 3.4 million. You know, we're delivering on the promise that insurance can give, and that, in the end, I think, will build an insurance culture. As an entrepreneur, there's different challenges at each stage of the business. The key reason why I don't get tired, or if and if I get tired, the person who picks me up is my co-founder. When you see someone who is still keeping strong in times of challenges, that also makes you strong and keep pushing on to the next challenge. What we are trying to do has never been done before. You are effectively trying to prove that the impossible is possible. There is enormous satisfaction from achieving that. 